Awesome. Good, good. Who's going to be with us is with us. Well, good morning. Welcome to Saturday School. This is the weekly Saturday School. We start at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, welcome to Ace's Spiritual Center for Divine Living, the place of possibility. Well, if you want to know more about the ministry, you can go to the website at the conclusion of today's presentation. That's www.oasisspiritualcenter.com. Um, so I welcome you to go there and um, poke around, find out what we're all about. We're a noun thought ministry. Um, we purposely are speaking to situations and circumstances with solutions. Uh, we are an African American centered ministry. Uh, my focal point, although my, uni my teachings are universal, I'm seeking to solve the solutions or be the solution to many of the challenges that are facing our communities today. Again, I welcome you for to, to out to this morning, Saturday School, where we've started a, a special teaching. But there's a couple of things I want you to know before we get started. I want to say there's some disclaimers I want to enter into this morning. Um, this is not a get rich series. OK, it's not about getting rich. We're looking at the principles of prosperity from a spiritual perspective, but you will uh, have the opportunity to experience riches and wealth at the same time. We, we will utilize spiritual principles and practices throughout the entirety of this week, 12 weeks we are together. And I want you to know it works if you work it and only if you work it. Uh, many times people will go to lectures and attend to um, seminars, but after a week, 30 days, they're not doing what they learned in the class. They, are, they were inspired, but they didn't aspire to uh, intentionally and deliberately um, carry out the things that they were uh, engaged in during the training. So this series of seminars will equip you, the believer, to move from poverty or having just enough to the place of prosperity through the acquisition of kingdom principles. So I do have to give the preface that we are a Christ-centered, a Christ-conscious ministry. So I teach from that perspective. We are not a, a Christian um, ministry, meaning that we are not a religious organization. We are a group of individuals who have the same spiritual orientation and have loosed ourselves from the bondage that traditional Christianity had put many of us in, particularly when we talk about um, what I'm going to go into on this morning. We're going to take some time and begin to work through um, this prosperity series. Uh, I don't know how long I will be in the series, um, even though this first session is 12 weeks, I may spend much longer than that because I have found as a uh, spiritual leader, uh, having pastored for over 30 some odd years and um, practiced as a spiritual practitioner, a life coach, and as a therapist in, in general, that behind most of the problems that the individuals who were coming to see me was the issue of prosperity or the issues of finances or monies. Um, and so we want to address that. The word tells us that money answers all things. I know we have a hard time embracing that, particularly if we are coming from the uh, traditional setting of uh, having a poverty mentality and piety when it comes to wealth and riches. OK, so I personally have learned the laws of prosperity the hard way um, by, from the schools of hard knocks, um, but I applied the principles and I have come to learn that the principles work if you work them. So during this series, we're going to cover universal principles. That mean principles that transcend denominationalism, transcend genders, trans transcends race. Um, it's going to be a very comprehensive. Um, and then there will be mastery application. I'm going to uh, ask that you uh, perhaps even purchase a book that you also take on the application that will be sent to those who are participating. So if you haven't signed up and you're joining on the YouTube channel, um, at the conclusion, you can send me an email at, at um, ambassador12 at me.com, um, ambassador12 at me.com. And I'll make sure that you get the email so that way you'll get 
um, the Zoom um, notification an hour before each class. So we're looking at uh, prosperity. Um, and we're gonna to begin to look at our key scripture, um, begin by really anchoring with this particular scripture, Deuteronomy 8.18. It says, but you shall earnestly remember the Lord, your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. That's from the Amplified Bible. I would reframe that to say, you shall remember the laws of the universe, for it is they who give you power to get wealth, that they may establish their covenant, which they have sworn to your fathers as it is this day. So I'm taking out that, that traditional God that orientates us to a church, that orientates us to uh, male, orientates us to God being a phenotype of a human being and, and making it more universal because as we delve deeper into these conversations, we're gonna talk about things such as energy, the law of attraction, and if you have um, the wrong idea, or if you're holding on to an old idea that's steeped in religion, you make it lost in the conversation. So I want you all to be able to track with me, if you will. So one of the books I'm going to recommend, many of you may have it already. If you're in the New Thought community, you are familiar with this book, uh, been around for quite some time. Uh, I have a copy in my hand. Um, but I also have purchased this book a numerous times. It was originally um, copyrighted in 1962, two years after I was born. So I am 62. So this book is actually 60 years old. And the principles over the course of my 40 years in ministry, I've purposely applied them. And so when I started to put together my notes for this series, um, one of the books that Spirit brought back to me was this particular book. So we're going to spend some time going through this book. If you don't have it, grab it. I'm going to touch on every practically every chapter in the book, um, but I'm going to bring it current to um, using examples from my own life, using examples from my clients who have used the principles. But the book is The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. I really encourage you to grab the book. Um, it's really a good book, an easy read, a lot of examples in the book. So we're going to start by looking at this today. Today, we're going to deal with the shocking truth about prosperity. Yes, it will be shocking for many of you as we begin to delve into this conversation on prosperity, primarily because we have been taught to believe that to be prosperous or to have wealth or have anything to do with money was um, so far removed from being spiritual. Well, I wanna tell you, you can't truly be spiritual if you're not prosperous. Prosperity oftentimes is a true sign of spirituality, being one with the universe, one with God, understanding that we live in an abundant universe and your behaviors align with that. Religious on the, uh, religion on the other hand, um, don't really spend a lot of conversation inside of prosperity. Most religion is talking about what you can have when you leave this earth plane. You can get some wings, you can walk the streets of gold, all of those things, which um, you must understand are all analogies. Um, and even Jesus said the kingdom within you is not somewhere out there. So if you are tuning in today, some of the things that I share with you uh, may cause you to look again. And I, I want to provoke you to do that. I want to provoke you to begin to reread some of the scriptures that we're going to talk about um, from a different lens, from a place of prosperity versus a place of poverty, um, taking on a prosperity mindset versus the poverty mindset. So that means many of us will have to um, reformat our belief systems because if you are African-American or you have, are of African descent and you live in, in the United States of America or one of the Caribbean islands, you will find that um, poverty is, has been programmed as a sense of normalcy in our lives. Um, because of that traumatic event 
um, coming here for the most part and having little or nothing and taking on the mentality of lack and poverty, uh, which has been promoted and continues to be promoted within the governmental structure in which we live. Um, a lot of people make money off of uh, individuals who have a poverty mentality. So we wanna move out of the poverty mentality and move into the truth of that you can be wealthy and prosperous. So what are my teaching points this morning? Um, some of the things I want to address this morning, I wanna address, you should desire wealth. Yes, we wanna look at the fact that you, if you're not desiring wealth, you want to be intentional and begin to desire wealth. We're gonna address poverty, is a sin for many. They believe their money is the root of all evil. Therefore, they believe that uh, um, poverty is um, normalcy, but I want to tell you that poverty is a sin, and we're gonna delve into that. Um, we're gonna look at prosperity. Is your divine inheritance? Yes, it's your inheritance. It's sad to see individuals who don't even know they have an inheritance, and we're going to um, spend some time inside of that conversation. Success is divinely ordered. It's practically in, um, impossible to be successful without a level of prosperity in your life. Some of what you're called to do um, that uh, would move you towards success will require you to perhaps attend seminars, purchase books, and everybody is not as liberal as myself. We will not give you this information in a way that you can take it to action immediately. A lot of times people will pull you into a seminar or workshop with the sale. That is at the end of it, you buy a book or you, you um, purchase a program and then you get the real deal. But um, inside of this, these teachings, you get the real deal that you can take to action immediately. We're gonna look at the Bible is a prosperity textbook. Yes, uh, the Bible is a very mysterious, mysterious book. Many times it, it's, it's what you, it, it begins what you to take on what you believe it to be. If you believe it to be a religious book about going to a place, then when you read it, it's gonna be filtered through that. But if you also understand the Bible is, has many layers to it, you can read it um, to get a better understanding of creation, cosmology, understanding metaphysical principles. Um, you can also inside of that read it as a prosperity textbook. And we're going to, during the course of this series, we'll be looking at it from that angle, through that lens, through that prism. Why poverty isn't spiritual? I think it's important that you um, come to grips with that, that poverty isn't spiritual. But I'd like to reframe that it's not divine spirituality, because even in poverty, there is a level of spiritual. Um, usually people who are in poverty are spiritually bankrupt. They may be religiously rich, but they're spiritually bankrupt. We're going to look at the right attitude and prosperity. Yes, your attitude determines your altitude. Um, so that's really important that you uh, begin to um, know what, what, um, what level you're flying at. Uh, what altitude are you currently at? And your altitude is dictated by your attitude. So you got to shift your altimeter to a higher frequency or a higher level and move your attitude up and you will rise in that. That is key. So I hope these, these are some of the things that will you, you will find beneficial and that will keep you coming back. We're going to look at how to stabilize your finances. Um, that's key. Um, part of that is identifying your godly point of satisfaction and begin to work from there. How do you know when you're in an overflow if you don't know what the baseline of just enough is? Many of, of us are operating inside the just enough and not really the more than enough. So I want to encourage you to um, do some work in an in a area of this week, we want to develop our budgets. I want you to get have a written budget so you can know what is it is, what, what you have coming in and what you have going out. Because once you know that, you will find that a lot of your anxiety will be relieved. Lastly, we're gonna deal with the link between thought and supply. We know as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what? 
thoughts do you have? What is your set points uh, when it comes to your beliefs, when it comes to money, when it comes to wealth, when it comes to riches? And we're going to take a look at that. So we're going to begin, begin by looking at um, some of the shocking truths. First of all, I want to say that um, these laws that I'm going to be sharing with you, um, a law is something that is proven um, and if it's universal, it applies to everyone. Um, so I, I want you to know that um, I was reading something um, regarding Proverbs 30, 23 and 37, and it says, as a man thinks within himself, so is he. And then we can find in Job, where Job tells us that um, in Job 22 and 23, thou should decree a thing and it should be established unto thee and light shall shine upon thy way. The sad thing is that many of many things that we are decreeing are the direct opposite of what we want to experience because we don't understand the law, the law of, you know, what you say, what you think, what you say uh, will actually manifest in your life. And then, so that's, that's important. You, you got to come to the realization also as we go into this teaching about prosperity, you can't get something for nothing. Everything costs something. Um, you pay little, you get little. Um, if, you don't, uh, if you don't understand the value of why something has a price point to you, you won't see that it being something of value. So but you got to understand you can't go through life expecting everything to be given to you. Matter of fact, we make a big error in thinking that God is going to give it. It says, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And that's talking about that is the Christ consciousness in you. God has given you dominion over this earth realm, and it's your responsibility to know how to steward it and to take your rightful place in this earth realm, uh, the ability to speak a thing and create a thing. That's why you call atum or atom. Uh, it means the ability to speak to, or, or to bring forth a vibrational sound or frequency that creates and the thing that you are named. So you have to be careful how you're calling it, how you're calling your life. How, what are you speaking um, out of your mouth in regards to what you are experiencing, okay? Um, so you got to know that. And then some people say they don't have anything to give. You always got something to give. You can give your time. You can make use of your talent. Um, there are some things you can give. And when you start giving, you're going to start receiving. Um, and as you start receiving, you'll be able to give more and you'll be able to even give in the form of your, you see your resources or your, your financial situation um, changing. You'll begin to radiate and attract the very thing that will help you reach or get to your expected end. But before we get started, you have to um, know that you got to prepare um, it, through your mental preparation um, comes first. You got to get your mind right. OK, you got to think along the right thought pattern. You can't just hold on to what you already know because if what you knew was enough, you wouldn't be in this course. And I, that's not to slight, slight anyone or say that you're in poverty, but you are here today because this has piqued your interest. And um, whether you're on the live or whether you're listening to this at some future date, um, you are here because you have a problem you're trying to solve. Maybe you got more bills at the end of a month at the end of a payday. Maybe you, get, maybe you got a situation where you need resources like yesterday. Um, it can happen. And I'm gonna share with you some stories how uh, I was able to manifest hundreds of thousands of dollars in within a seven day period. Um, um, so it can be done. And if you, if you are dependent on your wealth to be dictated by what you can earn, you're going to miss it, okay? Uh, source, God never says you have to earn it. It does imply that you got to learn it. And then when you learn it, you are open to receive, see? You, you're open to receive. You're not open to earning. Earning is okay, okay? But it's not 
the primary way in which source desires to bless you. It's not the primary way that you can have access to more than enough, okay? Many people work hard to attract greater good in superficial ways without first habitually radiating in the mental equipment. You are a match to what you are experiencing. If you are fluctuating, well, sometimes you are prosperous or wealth is, is the, the um, manifestation in your life. And sometimes you're, you're on, on this, the, the alley of busted and broke and almost disgusted. That's because you are in alignment with that frequency. And so we want to learn how to hold the intentional frequency that we don't take the, the journey back to the life of less than. That, that's important. And we're going to talk about an affirmation you can hold in order that you may see this thing happen. I want you to be deliberate about amassing wealth, prosperity, uh, experiencing prosperity, uh, having riches to come into your life. I, I really want you to um, be deliberate and intentional. Many people will do a hit and miss thing. They'll, they'll start being intentional and they'll fall off. I want you, that's why I'm going to go deep into this series and it's going to go beyond 12 weeks. I know it because the more you talk about it, the more you will be about it. That, that's important. Um, uh, there is a scripture that reads, if a man does not work, he does not um, eat. Okay, good. Does it say, does it mean like the word also says labor not to get wealth? Now it's not, it's the scriptures implies that we should not be lazy. Um, we all have a work to do, but it not, it's not always tied to a vocation or punching a clock. Um, and when it talks about working, do we limit it to what we can do with our hands? How about if a person works with their minds? Um, many people look at what's going on today. Um, if you look back, let's say five, 10 years ago, you had individuals who was um, uh, be beginning to get out on YouTube and uh, begin to put content out there and people would ask them what they do uh, for a living and they, they would say they create content and they would tell them you need to get a job. But if you look today, the fastest growing sector of, of the new job sector is those who are on YouTube creating content and getting paid for it. So work, it doesn't always have to mean labor, doesn't always have to mean punching a clock, doesn't always have to mean that it's a particular vocation. So we have to learn how to use the scripture. So that's a great scripture. You, you, I'm glad you mentioned that, Sister Cheryl. And as I go through, when you guys have something, please drop it over in the chat so I can address it. So um, the Bible tells us we're not to labor to get wealth. You, that means you don't have to work the principles of the world. You don't have to, you know, the world work has a practice, but we should have a principle. Um, so the first principle we want to look at is the, the principle that you should desire to be prosperous, okay? You must come to the realization that um, you don't have to be okay with your current station of life. If you grew up on the other side of the tracks where you didn't have a silver spoon, you barely had a plastic spoon, you don't have to resolve that this just my station in life. Maybe you came here in this incarnation um, incarnation to experience um, moving from poverty to pos to prosperity. That's part of what your soul agreement came here to to deal with. Okay, um, but many people wonder in a secret way: Should I be desiring wealth? Um, I recall as a kid when there was um, the certain um, people that like uh, Reverend Ike. He was known as a prosperity preacher and people would talk about him. Religious people would talk about him. But then I couldn't understand half the religious people that was talking about him was broke, busted and disgusted. The only person that had two pennies to rub together appeared to be the, the spiritual leadership, the, the pastor. But because he had a, a wealth uh, of riches at his hand based on the labor of those who were sitting in the pews. So I just couldn't understand why they would. Um, make fun of or talk down to those preachers such as your Johnny Coleman's who um, had the largest at one point had the largest new thought church 
in America. Uh, over 10,000 women, she's there, was there in Chicago. She passed away not too long ago, within the last, I think, uh, eight, eight or 10 years, she passed away. So there are preachers who preach this message. And now, a lot of times, if you pay attention to those individuals who, who have a problem with individuals who preach a prosperity gospel, so to say, are very religious people, are people who are feigning as though they have wealth and riches or they're okay. But the reality is, how do you even know what they're preaching if you haven't listened to them? So you have to desire wealth. You have to get to the place that you can say to yourself that you desire wealth and it is God's good pleasure for you to be prosperous and wealthy, okay? Perfectly wonderful people seem quite confused whether prosperity should be considered a spiritual blessing. And over the next few weeks, I want you to move through that. I want you to begin to work through that. I want you to ask yourself, how do you feel about your current station in life when it comes to wealth, riches, prosperity? Are you living inside of the land of just enough? Um, so, so that's important that you know that. Um, next, we want to understand that poverty is a sin. Yes, um, you, know, you cannot be happy if you're poor. If you are in need of, um, to be poor is a sin. That means you are missing the mark. Poverty is the result of missing the mark or staying inside of what has been given to you, of rehearsing what is around you. You can be prosperous. You are not resolved to being in a life of poverty. Poverty is often looked at as dirty, it's uncomfortable, it's a degrading experience. I don't know about you, I've never been in an object of uh, poverty, but I've experienced poverty is not having enough. So if you have experienced less than what you need, if you ever had your lights cut off, if you ever had your phone disconnected, if you ever ha uh, had to hide your car, if you ever thought about hiding your house, but you can't hide your house, if you ever had to hide, if you feel like every time the phone rings, you have to look at it and determine if you're going to answer it, then you may ask yourself, what is that tied to? Because maybe you don't have enough. And because you don't have enough, your creditors are calling you. So you do, you're going to have some things showing up in your life to help you understand where you at. And you got to develop a baseline. You have to say, on the scale of, of prosperity, am, am I above the six? or above the five, or I'm below the five. If you're at the five, you're just enough. Below the five, the just enough means you're meeting all your financial obligations. You're living life, getting to do some of the things that you wanna do, but not everything. When you want to um, secure or experience something, the first thing you ask is how much? You're right around the five or six. Because when you're not at the five and six, you don't even ask how much something is. You don't even look at it. You don't even consider it. And too many people are in poverty because they just believe it's God's will for them. When we understand poverty, we can, we can boil down some of the societal um, issues to poverty. Poverty fills prison with thieves and murderers. It drives men and women to drink, to prostitution, to doing things that doesn't represent their highest and greatest good, but it's their opportunity for gain or to mask the pain. Um, doctors will tell you that poverty it will cause sickness and disease. When you look at the um, communities where poverty is the, the uh, frequency of the community, you find that the educational level is low, you find that um, violence is high, you find that um, addictions is running rampant, uh, escapism, Poverty breeds a desire to escape by whatever means necessary. Um, so, um, so even um, looking at poverty as a sin is essential to you moving into a prosperity mindset. You gotta know that um, if you've been living financially in lack and limitation, you are literally living inside of a vice. And so we wanna move away from that. All right, see here if I got anything else going on. Okay, good. Um, the next teaching point, prosperity is your divine inheritance. Yes, it is your divine inheritance um, to prosper. The Bible is filled with rich promises. That's why I say we use the, the Bible as a wisdom, as a uh, teaching a textbook 
to help you affirm um, the teaching that is a good place to start because God created you fearfully and wonderfully made. He gave you an assignment to steward um, the earth and the earth, the realm that you're called to steward is that what you're over. That is steward your physical body, steward your the, the environment in which you are in charge of, um, be able to um, call into your life the things that represents your highest and greatest good. You should be prosperous, well supplied, and have an abundance of good because it is your divine inheritance. Your creator, our creator, source, divine intelligence desires for that to be so. Okay, that is the reality. Is that is a shockingly nice truth to know about prosperity. You can't be much good to yourself if you have just enough. The Bible says uh, a man is an imbecile if he don't take care of his own house. But we have people who's taking care of the house of God and other house, supposedly the house of God, and not taking care of their own. Many people, many men never allow their shadow to fall on the church. Many children grow up and don't go to church because they know that mama took the what appeared to be the last, gave it to the preacher or gave it to the church. And they had some animosity about that and, and they weren't taking care of their own house. So you got to take care of your own house first. OK, you give out of the abundance, you give out of the uh, overflow. You cannot be a giver if you have just enough. OK, you cannot live fully on the mental plane without satisfying your creative mental activity. And in order to satisfy your creative activity, you're going to have to read books. You're going to, you have to pay for an Internet subscription. So it costs money in order in, in this earth realm in which we live to expand. You know, it, it, it costs money. Depends on how how much you want to expand. It may not cost. It can cost little or nothing. But if you really want to make a dent, if you really want to live a truly prosperous life, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you your time. Okay. And many people don't have time because they're in poverty because all their time is spent exchanging time for money. Okay. They're working to survive. So we want to move out of survival mode. If you're prosperous, you're not in a survival mode. Okay. Um, make no excuses for putting up with lack and accepting it as a permanent arrangement in your life. Starting today, don't accept the fact that it is what it is as pertains to what is. You want to accept that it is and then take corrective actions in order that you don't have to deal with that. OK, so that that's really important to me that you all begin to um, be more mindful of what you are accepting in your life and that you will truly be attentive to um, cultivating what needs to be cultivated in your life. Um, that, that's that's important um, that you that you do that. And it's really important. Um, good. So prosperity is your divine inheritance. Next teaching point, success is divinely ordained. Yes, it's ordained, meaning it, you, it's part of your DNA. It's part of your design. Don't, there's no reason for you to think of prosperity as something separate from your spiritual life, okay? Spiritual beings living in a human body, experiencing the, uh, the, the thing, this which we call humanity. So it's all intertwined. We got to begin to stop having some things as sacred and some things as sacrilegious or some things. So it all is sacred, okay? Take God as rich or begin to see source as a rich, okay? Loving, understanding um, creator. Uh, even beyond seeing it as a father, seeing it as a creator and that whom he, it has called, whom it has created, it will also equip. That is, that is really critical that you understand that. If God has given you, if source has given you assignment, source will also provide you the resources, okay? So we gotta know um, success is divinely ordained. Being wealthy, having riches is ordained of God. We can't Take these scriptures and misapply them. 
you know, where it talks about um, uh, mammon, okay? Uh, you can't serve God and mammon. Um, so you have to begin to relook those scriptures, what they, what they really mean. That is, you should not be in search of mammon without going about it in a spiritually and a divine way. You, we, we got to relook um, some of the things we've been taught. OK, Matthew 6, 24, it says there you cannot serve God and mammon. And because of that scripture being misinterpreted, misappropriated, people use that as a way to say it's OK to be where I'm at. When I get to heaven, I'll be in a better position. No, God desires for you to have it now, not tomorrow. That, that's really important. OK. Mm -hmm. Um, very important for you to know that. Okay, good. Next teaching point that you want to contemplate on this week is to be the Bible is a prosperity textbook. Now, I know that's um, difficult for a lot of people because many people see it as their roadmap to get to heaven or to avoid hell. Many people use the Bible particularly as a historical book. Uh, which is an error. It is not a history book. It, it is not depicted. The Bible does not depict, and I know this is going to be a challenge for some people. Um, a lot of the people that's in the Bible that is, who are ascribed to have never lived. It's all a story. It, the story it has messages, and too many times we get caught in the messenger instead of the message. So even if no one in the Bible ever existed, the lessons the messages that come forth from the stories are those things that empower us. So don't get caught in personalities. Don't get caught in people. When you begin to read the Bible and you see it as a textbook on um, prosperity, health, wealth, whatever you need, you can find it here in the scriptures, okay? Um, Jesus is teaching. He, he, uh, even on his team, he had a tax collector because he knew how in this natural realm and you are not going to create money does not fall from heaven. Money comes from the things that heaven has been has created and you transmute it like you can pick up cans and take them to the store and you can transmute a can for for money. OK, and you transmute the money for the couch you desire or you transmute the money for the gas you desire. So it's all about transmuting the uh, natural thing into that invisible thing or that thing that allows you to exchange, okay? Um, so it's, it's, it's important that you come to grips that as you read the Bible, you're gonna, and the reason why I like that you read the Bible because the vast majority of people that I'm speaking to have history with the Bible, have history with the church. So you don't have to learn a whole new source document. You just have to become familiar with what's in this document. So I do encourage people, um, those who are believers and those who are receivers um, to consider the teachings of the Bible. I know people who are not even um, Christians. I know um, people who are follow after Islam and they read the Bible as another additional source document. Those who are Catholic, they read the Bible as another source document. So we should read the Bible as one of our primary source documents when it comes to our life, when it comes to what we have been created to do, be a half. You find um, affirming stories, within the Bible. So it is a, a good place to start, um, even by going through and trying to find all the scriptures that has to do with prosperity, has to do with riches, has to do with wealth. You'll be surprised, you know, even God is known as Jehovah Jireh. God is my provider. He's uh, El Shaddai, the many breasted one, the God of more than enough. So if we look at some of the, not names, but the descriptions of God, we see that prosperity is found therein. So that, that is really important that you begin to dust it off and begin to open it up and read it. Why poverty isn't spiritual? You know, you don't gotta, you got to understand that poverty isn't spiritual. Religion has given you the impression that to be without is a sign of God, godliness. It, it, it tells you that you're gonna, you're gonna, most believers are gonna be in lack um, because you didn't come here for that. You came here to get back there. No, poverty 
is not spiritual. Anybody who is inside of poverty is religious. It, oftentimes in a religious system. Matter of fact, religion breeds poverty because it will have you taken that which example you are giving to others before you get to yourself. When you're spiritual, you understand that it's important that you give to yourself first and then you can give to others. Then you could be in a position to bless those who have blessed you with perhaps a teaching. But if you're not taking care of yourself, then you're not being replenished. So that that's you are the God you have to give first to. You know that that is really critical that you understand that. Um, so the poverty truly is not spiritual. Okay. Um, right attitude and prosperity. You have to have the right attitude in order to be prosperous. Okay, um, you got the wrong mental attitude, you will not be prosperous. The right attitude lends itself to you living a prosperous life. Your attitude changes your altitude. Now, um, in order to help you establish the all important prosperous attitude that source desires you to have, you must first understand that source is your supplier. God is my supplier, source is my supplier. And source desires to give me what it is I have need of. Source knows what I have need of before I even ask. But we are so quick and we have the attitude that if I don't work for it, I won't get it. If I don't earn it, I will not get it. That's a poverty prosperity. That is not saying that you can't work. That is not saying that you can't create a product or deliver a service, but those are asides. Those are additional cash streams, okay? In, in, um, um, in Moses' in Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says, I will remember Jehovah God, for he is that giveth me power to experience wealth. I remember source, for it is source that gives me power to get wealth. And inside of wealth is riches. And inside of riches is money and things that can be transmuted for money. So you want to reframe that, that it is source that gives you the power to experience wealth. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. I see we have a, one of our participants says, this course is definitely for me. Great teachings. Not only is it for you, my sister, it's for all of us, even myself. I slip in and out of poverty uh, mentality. Now, poverty mentality has um, degrees to it. The deepest degree of poverty mentality is the person who is broke, busted, and standing on the corner at the lowest um, end of the poverty spectrum. But then you have people who are one paycheck from being um, homeless that's higher in the poverty spectrum. But you wanna move beyond that five, which is the high end of the poverty spectrum to that eight, nine end of the prosperity spectrum. Now, if you get on this poverty, the prosperity spectrum at six, seven, eight, life will be grand. It'll be much better than it is than having just enough. You wanna get above that five. You gotta have the right attitude to get there though. You gotta know where your money comes from. Um, when you have a financial need, you don't automatically take on the attitude, I must go and do something. The first thing you should do is get quiet. For the scripture tells us in Psalms 46 and 10, be still and know, or be still and give me the opportunity to show that I am one with you, that I desire to see you to your expected end. But many times our attitude is such that I have to go and do something versus I have to be still and be something. So I want you to get to that place that when you are in need of something, to be still. And you come to the realization of the 23rd Psalm where it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
Now, let me break that down to you. You should read it as the law. The universal law is my guide. A shepherd is a guide, okay? I shall not want or I will not lack. It is a sin to want. Want is the identification of lacking something and not doing anything about it except wanting it. That's a sin. You're missing the mark because as long as you want it, it will never come to you. As long as you want it, you'll get more of what you're experiencing. So you have to learn to move from the place of wanting anything. My God shall supply all, not some. If all of your needs are being met, then there's no want. Now, when you do have an inclination of a desire, then you got to do the right thing. When you desire something, you first have to check in and see, does this thing that I desire represents my highest and greatest good? Like right now, I've been looking at, and I, I, I was um, earlier, I was looking at um, the new Mercedes. I have a 2017, good shape, everything is good. Um, it's an E-class, but I want to get back into my, uh, into the S-class series. And so I had to ask myself, I said self, um, does it represent my highest and greatest good? And it doesn't. And if it does represent my highest and greatest good, I don't have to work, think about how am I going to finance this, where it's going to come from, all the things. Matter of fact, all the Mercedes that I've had, I've paid cash for except this one. This is the, the first one that I've had that I have a note on it. And I'm like, what? And because I had slipped back into the, the poverty paradigm. I was looking at what I had in my hand and not looking at what I had in source in God. But it's okay. It is absolutely okay to um, put things on credit. But there's a more perfect way than that. Um, so you deal with that. So um, Psalms 23 and 1 is a good prosperity declaration. Okay. The law, the universal principles is my guide. I have no need or I lack in no thing. That's important. That's important. We understand that God is our, our sufficiency. Our sufficiency is in source. He is our resource. That's second Corinthians three and five. Okay. We want, we want to get to that place where we know that we have an attitude, the right attitude that will take us to the altitude that we need to get to. How to stabilize your finances. This is um, something that's really important. Um, Psalms one, two, and three um, tells us that, uh, and he shall be like a tree planted by the stream of water that bringeth forth its fruit in season, whose leaves also doth not wither, and whosoever he does, whatsoever that person does shall prosper. So that's an anchoring scripture. Whatever I do prospers. The seeds I sow will show up in due season. Many times we are destabilized because we give today and expect a harvest tomorrow. Matter of fact, the taller the tree, the deeper the root, the taller the building, the deeper is this foundation. And so if you're expecting big things, that means that seed, a financial seed, that, that prosperity seed is going deeper into the earth. And it takes sometimes much more time. So don't be discouraged, okay? Because what you desire is not manifesting in the natural now. But once you understand that as a spirit being, a God class, divine spiritual being, you create from the unseen and you don't try to bring it into the seen until in the unseen, it is so real as it has already happened. If you leave the unseen realm, and come into the seen realm and have not cultivated the unseen or have not matched that frequency of what's in the unseen realm, 
to the point where you could bring it into the natural realm, it never materialized or it takes time for you to materialize. And some of you are destabilized um, because of that. So the first thing I want you to learn to do to stabilize your finances is to know what your financial situation is. So here's an assignment for all of you for this week. I want you to list every, every obligation, financial obligation that you have. And you can determine that by looking back over the last two to three months and see what is being paid. The reason why I have some of you go back two or three months because maybe you didn't pay last month. So if you're just looking at last month, you forgot you didn't choose to pay certain things because you didn't have it. And it's okay. I've been there where I have had to um, pray that somebody could slap me into tomorrow. That is tomorrow's payday. No, that's a joke. I mean, where, you, where you, you payday is a far off and what needs to be taken care of is today. And then when payday does come, so many things have piled up that you can't take care of some of those things. And you're going through, do I need to pay this? Do I need to pay that? Uh, I ain't paying my car. No, I'm going to hide my car. See, I, I don't want to talk to you about prosperity and wealth and riches without talking from the place where many of us have been and where some of us are. But don't be in judgment. You're doing what you have to do at this current place in your life. But I want to say there is a more perfect way. There is a new possibility being presented to you today. So you're gonna create, you're gonna create a list of everything that goes out, okay? And the, the, everything you pay. And then in the next column, how much you're supposed to pay in that column. And then in the next column, I want you to put the day that is due, okay? Because many of us don't know our due dates. Many of us don't want to know the due dates, but you want to know the due date. You want to make good on your obligations that you have. I'm reading a book, and this book is entitled Happy Money. Uh, okay, it's happy money, um, the Japanese art of making peace with your money. Think about it. When you spend money, how do you feel about that money? Okay, you want to you, you wanna look at what is, your, are you a vibrational frequency? Which, do you feel um, attached to that thing, that you got to hold on to that thing? Or do you feel that you, when you have to release it, you're, you're angry, that you have to let it go when you are uh, holding fast to your obligations. Uh, and I want all of us to, to begin to know that it's a blessing to have credit extended to us, okay? But we become a liability to those who extend credit to us and we don't make good on it, okay? And it messes your name. A, a good name is more than silver, more precious than silver and gold or more precious than rubies. So you want to have, uh, when you talk about a good name, that's equivalent to having a good credit. Okay. So I'm telling you, your wealth position is not dictated by your credit either. You know that? You can get some things in life when you operate with the right prosperity mindset, but if you're running a true prosperity mindset at the right frequency, your credit, your credit um, scores are going to reflect that. So your credit score is also a good reflection of whether or not you're running a poverty or a prosperity paradigm. We may not want to, uh, to acknowledge that, but that is a very natural way to determine, am I running a prosperity or a poverty paradigm because you can look like prosperity but when you close the door at night you are don't have no food in your cupboard you 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 you're borrowing from peter to pay paul and 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 trying to avoid simon okay so what i want you to do is to get you're not even developing a budget you're just getting a sense of what do i have going out what are my obligations? And then you can next identify what do you have coming in? But once you identify what you have obligations to, that is your, should be your godly point of satisfaction. Now you are at the, you are the place of just enough. And if your just enough are not being met, then you are probably dealing with poverty in some way. So we want to, at least get to, in the next month or two, I want everybody to at least be at the place of just enough. Because when you had just enough, you can breathe. 
<laughs> when you had just, but see the thing about just enough also, it can make you complacent. So, but I want to get you at just enough to prepare you to live in a life of more than enough, which is a life of prosperity. Awesome. So that's how we're gonna start by stabilizing our finances. We're gonna know what our baseline is. Where are we? What do we need? What is coming in? What is coming in by way? What are my cash streams? What are my flows that are coming to me? And then be open to receive. Don't limit yourself in what you can do, what you can create. It's really important that you know that. The link between thought and supply. There, that, is the, that is the golden thread that you must acknowledge, that there is a link between your thoughts and supply, okay? Um, if my prosperity comes basically from God, source, he is my supply. It is my supply. So where is your, is your supplier your job? Is your supplier your man? Is your supplier the women you're running? What's your supplier? And until you can get to the place where source is your supplier, you are running a poverty paradigm because when source is your provider, then if that job comes and goes, you don't lose your mind. You're not up at night wondering how. Just like source bought that employer into your life, source will bring another employer. So the word says God is the, will give you a witty invention. God will give you an idea, an idea that you can take to the market, an idea that you can transmute into resources. You may barter. That's, that's transmuting. You may have something that means little or nothing to you anymore, but somebody else has something that you value. And to them, it means little or nothing. You guys can exchange that. You transmute it into what you desire. It does not always take money. God supplies your every need. We only go after money because money is our avenue of exchange. Going on a vacation, first thing you ask, how much it costs? Want a new handbag? How much it costs? Come to lunch with me? Who's buying? How much it costs? And we are living our lives in the poverty paradigm when that's the first thing we ask. Now, it's one thing about just so you know what you got to pull down. But when I ask how much it costs, it's because I want to know what the man I have to put on source to my supplier. OK, and my supplier may say, um, be still and know that I am God. Tomorrow you're going to get a phone call and that person is going to bless you or be still and know that I'm a God. And you don't know you're going to get a phone call and that person bless. You. Hey, I can tell you, I've lived. I know how to live when I have much. And I know how to live with nothing. 2012, um, I mean, 2014, my life changed. I sold my house. I moved to uh, Atlanta. Um, perfect storm happened, resulting in me losing the place that I had. Furniture was stolen. I had high-end furniture, furnished the whole house. It was stolen. My clothes were stolen. Um, shoes that I hadn't worn were stolen from me. So I ended up really being homeless uh, as far as I'm concerned. Most people, most people didn't know it because you will never be able to determine what my financial situation is by looking at me. I'm never going to look bu broke, busted, and disgusted. There's been times when I didn't have two pennies to rub together, but no one knew it unless she was really up close and personal with me and I felt comfortable enough to share with you. And only reason, and it wasn't because I was ashamed because sometimes when you share with an individual what you're going through, they don't think you are the answer. Sometimes you go through something, you get through something in order that you can have a greater appreciation and that you can show people what works. It's one thing for me to tell you these things work, but I've never worked them. But I've worked them. I amassed, I have amassed, I'll give you a good example. I had rented out my home. My, I had another home and I rented it out for two years. And I had one room that the person, that, oh, I had a closet that um, things were being put like this, you put my mail in and things like that. And so after the lease was up, I came, I actually had moved back into that home. And for, it was January. And the matter of fact, it was the end of the, the year. And the spirit told me to clean my house. And that meant I was went in my office and I was had tons of mail. I was just going to toss because it was old. But spirit told me to go through the mail. 
I went through the mail and to make the long story short, I found a notice. And the notice stated that the house that I was in right then was going to be sold for taxes in, it, at that point, it was seven days. Well, you may say that's not true because they have, you have three years. That's right. Three years, remember I leased my house out. I was under the impression that that house was um, situated in, um, as part of the church properties, which means that there was no taxes due on it, but it never got done at the closing when we bought the house. So that meant that I owed $30,000 and I had to have $30,000 in seven days. At first, I was kind of, um, Kind of, kind of ashamed of what was happening. But then I said, you know, I can't get stuck in shame. I need to deal with this thing. So I went, went, I went to sleep. <laughs> the best thing you can do when you got a problem that you can't sing the song, go to sleep. Be still and know that God is. I didn't toss, I didn't turn, I went to sleep. The one thing about me, I, I, I have never tossed and turned. I always sleep. No matter what was coming the next day, I slept. So I went to sleep. And when I woke up, I had the idea that I was not going to allow this person to get my house for, he had probably um, paid the taxes and paid, um, let's say, $10,000 to $12,000. $12, and now because of the interest, it was up to $30,000. I said, no. So I said, you know what? The spirit said, find someone you want, can sell the house to for $30,000 or sell the house to. So I actually found, matter of fact, somebody came to me within the next day. Now the house, the house value at that time was 230. The house was purchased for $400,000. But in 2007, remember the market dropped out and all the values fell off. So I already had lost half the value, but I didn't lose anything because I didn't pay anything for the house. But then when it came down to the house, our $200,000, was owed on the house and this person was gonna get the house. No, 200,000 wasn't owed on the house because I owned the house, I didn't tell you, I owned the house free and clear. It was being taken for taxes. Now, most people don't tell you things like this because they'll say, you know, he's, he's stupid. He doesn't have money management. Now, regardless of you want to hold in judgments, you're missing the message that I'm saying to you. All of us have made missteps. All of us have made mistakes. All of us have done what we thought was right at that time was the wrong, wrong step. However, it was the right step because it, without that having happened, I would not know that God can work outside of the time constraints we put him inside of. So in seven days, long story short, somebody paid um, me $100,000 cash for that house. Now, notice I didn't owe anything on the house. I had to take $30,000 down to the state to get the tax lien off. I took the 30 and that means I had $70,000. So I, I walked away with $70,000. I've had many occasions in my life when I have had great windfalls because I know God is my supplier. I know that I didn't go into what do I need to work and do? No, I waited for God to give me the solution. And if he gives you the solution, he's going to give you the setups. Can you receive that? So the link between thought and supply, your thoughts have to be aligned with God is your supplier. He meets your every need. You have to come to the appropriation that I am the rich child of a loving force or father or, or a loving universe. I now accept and claim it's rich good for me in every phase of my life. My own God-given success is in the form of rich ideas and rich results that now appears, okay? God will give you an idea, okay? The answer is in you. The answer is you. So we covered this morning in this session, you should desire wealth. Poverty is a sin. Prosperity is your divine inheritance. Success is divinely ordained. The Bible is um, a prosperity textbook. Why poverty isn't spiritual. The right attitude and prosperity. How to stabilize your finances. The link between thought and supply.
We cover those things. I would encourage you to get a hold of the book in order that you can go into deeper detail. And I'll be sharing other things with you this week until we meet next week. So we've been inside of this series. Um, I want you to affirm with me. Divine love expresses through me now. I'm affirming it once. And then I want you to affirm what you see on the screen. Divine love expressing through me now draws to me all that is needed to bring me joy in my life and, and make my life complete. So affirm with me. Divine love expressing through me now draws to me all that is needed to bring me joy and make my life complete. Awesome. So the book, Recommended Reading, Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. I hope you will take the time out and purchase you a copy so you can write in it and read it until it's worn. Before we close this morning, one of the divine laws of prosperity is that you always make space for those who have been blessed by you to be a blessing to you, to give and as you shall receive. So anytime I give something, I don't expect something. I know this for true. If you give value, you're going to get a value back. Not that people buy my services or my, my gifting, but they find value and it shows appreciation. We are all given something. And the first thing we should do with that, which we have been given, is invest it. So you're not investing in this course because it's not costing you anything. You're investing in yourself. But then with part of what is left over, you give, you sow into the lives of those who are um, bringing value to your life. Then you circulate what's left over within the Black community, particularly by Black, be Black. Um, come on now. That's how we prosper inside of our communities. So this morning, if this teaching has been a blessing to you, um, there's ways that you can give. You can give in traditional ways, snail mail. You can go to the, the website, oasisspiritualcenter.com. Or you can text the word give to 417-815-8227. Those are the platforms. Now. I want to acknowledge. First of all, thank you. Giving is a sacred act of your acknowledgement of another person's value in your life. And your giving to this ministry and to me is just that, an acknowledgement. So I hope something has been said that has been uh, informative, encouraging, enlightening, and that you take on the work that needs to be taken on uh, for this, this morning's teaching. So thank you for joining me. Um, if you have questions, you can stick around and we'll have a um, conversation in the green room. But the teaching, the lecture today is over and you can freely be on your way. Awesome. Good. Let me get a, a swig here. And then I want to just open up for clarity, conversations, um, insight, whatever you want to share with me. You can raise your hand and I'll come right to you. I'll be right with you, Carolyn. Or you can um, actually type your question in the chat if you want to do that. All right. Good morning, Carolyn. How are you doing this morning? You have the mic. You unmuted on my side. Carolyn? Good morning. Yes, Pastor Greg. <clears throat> yes, yes. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. I didn't know I was still on the line. Oh, yeah. Um, you're on the line. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Listen, I have just been absorbing all morning, okay, right? Good. That's and awesome. uh, actually, I'm waiting. I'm at a baptism, and I didn't think I was going to get through the whole teaching this morning. But um, thank the Lord, I did. You know, so I'm just sitting here holding the phone, and you call my name. I'm like, am I still on? It's like, um, <laughs> well, you are. Okay, good, good. Well, is there anything you want to share? If not, I understand that you're in the midst of something else, and uh, we appreciate that. Uh no. Well, nothing I want to share right now. I just know that uh, I definitely believe in divine appointments. <laughs> okay. Good. I believe in, I don't believe in coincidence. So I'm thinking, I'm just thankful right now. And I'm just taking everything in right now. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today. Good. All right. All right. Bye -bye. Awesome. Good, good. Awesome. Um, this question is definitely, so there's no other feedback. Um, there's no other, hands are not up. Um, so I take it that all is well with each of you. And that means I did a, a bang up job that I made my points clearly. Uh, but I encourage you to don't be hesitant. Oh, there is a couple of questions. Can you turn up the volume? Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I, I didn't see that. Um, hopefully that, that 
um, ultimately it came through clear. Uh, what's the name of the book you're reading from now? Um, I was going through parts of what I was going through was the Dynamic Laws of Prosperity. That is the book for the course. Um, and the other book was is actually Happy Money. I'm trying to get it where you can see it. Yeah, Happy Money. Okay, um, by Ken Honda. You can also YouTube Ken Honda. Happy Money, and you you can grab some of his teachings, um, and he'll talk about that book there. Thanks, um, Wilder, for joining us. I pray things will have been some years since we have been in the same sacred space together. Um, I, I pray that things are well. I'd like to know where you fellowship in at in Chicago, so when I come to visit, I can um, visit also. Awesome. That's all I have this morning. Oh, Linda, I see your hand there. All right, good morning, Linda. You have the mic. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, this was an awesome class. I'm telling you, I had you on a speaker in my house and I, my family, they all, my sisters and brothers, like, we got to listen to this. You should have warned us. I said, I didn't know what was <laughs> what I was going to talk about. Like, so we'll be at the table together next Saturday. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And that fantastic. means prosperity. I like that um, because many times people's prosperity level is impacted because they're the only one in the family who are prosperous. And you need to know this, that when you, a prosperous person has wisdom, you're not there to take solve other people's problem with what God is giving you in many cases. So even before you rescue someone, you better ask God, is this represents my high, highest and greatest good? Because I learned a lesson. I used to rescue a lot of people and God said, okay, I got you. If you're going to rescue people, I'm going to put you in the same boat with them that you need to be rescued too. Because sometimes people need yeah, to learn yeah. a lesson. So I, I want to say yeah, hello to your entire problem. family. Good, 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 good. I want to say hello to your entire family and I pray something that's been said, um, something that's been uplifting and encouraging. The teaching will be uh, formatted and put on the YouTube channel, Oasis Spiritual okay. Center, and they can go there. I will notify you all when okay. the teaching is available. Okay. Awesome. Sure great. Me. Yes, thank you good. so much. All right, Linda, have a great day. Good, good. All right. Um, that's all I have. I thank you for your time and I look forward to engaging you throughout the week. If you're on the mailing list and you participate in the course, you'll get an assignment this week. Do you know your assignment though is to create your baseline budget? What do you have over the last three months? Where, what are you spending your money on? What are you obligated to do on a monthly basis? Then identify what day it's due then also identify what you currently have coming in because some of you don't have enough coming in to cover what you got going out. But I'm going to show you how once you start running this prosperity a frequency, this prosperity paradigm is not really dependent upon what you got coming in on a weekly basis that you have identified. God desires to prosper you if you can see it as your source. Have a wonderful day. I'm on my way. Peace.